on Divorce Court Today. After four years of dating, Tanisha and Isaiah got engaged. But are they ready for marriage? She says he is dishonest, disinterested, and a lousy provider. Isaiah thinks Tanisha cannot be trusted. Does this sound like a marriage made in heaven? Tanisha Bonner and Isaiah Moore have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toler to resolve. Testimony in divorce court before your vows starts now. Ms. Bonner, Mr. Moore, you two have been knowing each other for four years. You got engaged four months ago, but you're not sure you want to get married. You, you came here, you gave me a compatibility test, you both told me about your issues, you gave me a copy of your marriage license, which you gave me the right to tear up should I think that this union is ill-advised, and I got to tell you, after I read what I read, I almost lit this sucker on fire before <laughs> we even got out of here. You look like two really nice people, though. So we gonna get through this thing. I'm gonna clear my mind. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna move any matches that may be nearby. <laughs> and I'm gonna talk to you. Ms. Bonner, after four years of, of dating and four months of being engaged, why are you concerned <laughs> that this marriage won't work? Um, I'm concerned that the marriage won't work because Isaiah is... He has a lot of issues. Okay. And the number one is communication. Um, he can't seem to communicate with me about anything. Uh, if I have a problem, he try to brush it off or uh, wait till the next day to bring up something new, like it's just put in the past. So, so let's say you brought up an issue. You know, I'm concerned about uh, how much money we're spending. How, what, what would be his typical response? Oh, don't worry about it. Um, it'll come back around. Money is an issue, um, ma mainly because I make the money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm the one who's working all the time. So he didn't um, worry because he didn't pay anything. Well, he he worked, but he can't keep a job. I don't pay anything. Okay, Mr. Moore. He worked, but he can't keep a job. Okay. Um, and I don't know how he's losing these jobs, and I don't even know how he's picking them right back up. I don't even get into it no more. I just be like, it is what it, it is. It is what it is. At the end of the day, I'm gonna be the one coming out of my pockets. Mr. Moore, why don't you address her concerns with respect to finances? She seems to believe that you are chronically, not unemployed, but sporadically Tanisha employed. Tanisha is spoiled, you know? Tanisha is very unappreciative. <laughs> um, hang you... on, hang on, hang on. Tanisha, hang on, hang on, hang on. I asked you to explain your employment situation, okay. and, you, and you responded with a barrage of complaints about her. I understand. Do you see that as problematic? I understand, yeah, absolutely. Okay. In the current moment, um, I feel like I'm a host at a restaurant. Um, if I don't make enough money for Tanisha's, you know, if I bring a check home and Tanisha don't like that pay stub, it's a problem. She'll start an argument about it, you know. Hang on, Mr. Moore. No gender roles. Mr. Moore? What, what am I asking you about? Just you give me, me an that, idea. You basically just asked me, how do I feel about Tanisha's? She commented on my financial stability. You just told me to I explain I want to know, are you sporadically employed? Are you consistently employed? No. Are you consistently unemployed? I want to know factually what your economic situation is. I get money. <laughs> I don't. I if he don't, get it, he ain't sharing it. I, I, I don't believe in, you know, keeping a part-time job, Your Honor. Um, with much respect, I do respect the jobs that I have, you know? But if there have been instances, she's right about that, that I have lost my job, you know? Um, but I'm right back on my feet immediately. So you all, so you lose a job, but you get another one real quick. Absolutely. How come you keep losing them? That's the scary part, I think, I that understand. you keep losing jobs. What, why do you think that's happening? You know, um, I like to determine my own income. You know, I like to determine my own income. If I'm not making enough, I can't be okay with $600 every two weeks consistently for six and seven and eight months at the time. I'm always trying to build myself up. You so know? your response to wanting to, to be in charge of your income is to quit a job? 
No, that's not what I'm saying. My whole thing in, is basically expanding out, going in a different direction. If I start off working here, I'm going to go somewhere better. If I start off working here, I'm going to try so something So you're else. saying you're increasingly getting better and better and better Absolutely. jobs. Absolutely, and she's complaining about is it. That that is that true? Now, think about it. Is that true? That's is what true. he's making now more than he made two Absolutely years ago? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. She didn't tell you about, you know, her, her personal situation, though, as far as her singing and, you know, her music career that she's got going on. You got a What's music it? career? I don't have a music career, but I do, I do music on my free Spend time. On my spare time. I work two jobs. I model. I sing. Yes, I do. I mean, I want more out of life just like so him, falls. but I handle responsibilities like I'm supposed to. I do not quit jobs if I don't have a backup one. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and when it comes down to being in a relationship, I know, I know how to deal with um, financial problems, and I know how to deal with personal problems, and I know how to deal with love, because that's what I stepped up to. You know, I took that in. I said, I'm going to be in a relationship with you, and I'm going to deal with the responsibilities that we have. Mm -hmm. So I don't quit jobs in I got you. just I get because it. I want more. Mr. Moore, I'm going to go back to you for a second about the communication issue. She says when she brings up an issue that you avoid it. What is your take on that? All she's doing is basically flipping everything that she does on me right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so all she's so doing. you tell me what you think your communication problem is. Is it her? Yes. And how is she... Sending me short text messages in the morning. Good morning. Good morning, baby. LOL. Yeah, but she's do you ever... Her... Guys ever... You, all, you ever speak personally to one another? <laughs> yeah. We speak Because you're talking about text and phone calls. I mean, that's, that's number I one. Because that's I mean, all I get. We're two busy people, you know? I don't get face-to-face -face -face anymore. I'm 23 years old. She's 25. Um, I feel like she takes advantage of that. Okay. Let's talk about that. Next, how does a picture of Tanisha and a stripper pole affect their relationship? Are your in-laws all up in your business and destroying your marriage? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Real problems, real solutions. Divorce Court continues. I did see that you are two years younger than her. And you believe that she takes advantage of that. How, in what way? We can talk about trust. Um, social media. I'll give you an example. Tanisha hides her phone from me. Tanisha used to get messages. I used to be able to answer her phone in the beginning. Mm -hmm. The trust level went from here all the way down here. Tell um, me how the trust level disintegrated over time. I bet you ain't know that I had this. Well, 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 I want to know what this is. <laughs> if you could bring it over. Oh, my God. Now, tell me what this is, Mr. Moore. Yeah, what is that? Um, oh, I know what it is. OK. What, uh, what, what, she's on the pole. Is that her? That's Tanisha. That's me. I just happen to be, you know, on a social network and the internet, and it came popping up through my news feed, you know? Miss um, Bonner, tell me about the poll. Oh, I absolutely can. Um, I promote, I do parties. Uh, I support a lot of Cleveland artists. Um, so if they need me to promote their party or want me to show up and um, support, show them, them some, some support, I do. I show up and... It's not like she's working I show up and She's I just got to stand and buy it. <laughs> yeah. I show up. But um, as you can see, take a good look at the picture. There's nobody else in the picture with me. Let's talk about social media with all these hundreds of pictures of him and other girls kissing on each other's cheeks <laughs> and he's standing behind them, mm -hmm. holding them by the waist. I'm never in a picture with another man unless it's him. So if I'm at a club standing by a pole, it's, it's strictly for it's modeling. Strictly business. It's strictly business. It's strictly promoting. I don't ever... Well, have Ms. a man behind Ms. me. Ms. Butter, or... let me ask you this. You say you're putting in 100% worth of effort in your papers, and you say you're putting in 100% of effort, and both of you say that the other one's putting in zero, He's which not. I find fantastic. But why don't you tell me about the efforts that you've put in to maintain the romance and the relationship? 
Okay, well, I'm the one who always wants sex. I'm just going to put it you out put there it like out that. There. Um, apparently, he's not feeling me in that type of way anymore. So I try to do little things um, on my free time. Uh, like, for example, I called off of both of my jobs one day. Um, it was like a random Tuesday or Wednesday. And I went to do something special for him. So I got a hotel room with a jacuzzi. Oh, I put some okay. rose petals on the bed. I put it inside a jacuzzi. So here I am waiting, 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 waiting. 11.30 come, I mean, 11.30 come, and he's like, oh, well, my job needs to um, keep me a little longer. I'm like, well, look, I rented the room. I'm here till tomorrow. You can, you can come. You can, show you can come after. You can come after. I end up falling asleep. I wake up at 8 in the morning. I'm still there by myself. I got two missed calls from him, one at 2 a.m. and one at 3 a.m. No text message, no voicemail. Explaining Miss, nothing, just two missed calls. Mr. Moore, what am? She made it like, oh, baby, be here at 10, 30, 11 o'clock. I'll be waiting for you when it really wasn't like that. It was more it so like your curfew was at 10, 30. Be here at this address. Did she say your curfew? Did she say that? She says that? your curfew. She's when she my was mother. trying to sexually mother. entice you, she, she called not. up on the phone and she said, did not. you got a curfew. I was at work. I had things to do. I told Tanisha, she hey, listen, I never told her. If I, I, I was in a hotel room with rose petals and a bath, and I told my husband he's got a curfew to get to it, he'd, he'd, he'd be there. You know, I didn't know she had. <laughs> curfew wouldn't matter to him. All he wanted to know was all of that. Yeah. <laughs> when divorce court before your vows continues, what secrets will the compatibility test reveal? Do you think that Tanisha and Isaiah will change the way they communicate and save their relationship? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court Before Your Vows continues. I'm going to give you 90 seconds to tell me what it is about Mr. Moore that makes you want to marry him despite the concerns we have just discussed. So, go. Okay, well, he's very supportive uh, well, in what I want to do out of life. Um, he never... He never down-talked me. He's, like, there 100%. I'll say that. And he actually shows effort, like, when he really needs to. He'll, he'll really show that he's there for me. Mm -hmm. um, and he just... I mean, You're struggling over there, Miss Bonner. I gotta <laughs> say. I mean, he just he he put up with a lot. I, yes, I am an attention hogger, and yes, I do want everything. I want to be a baby, and um, he he's there. He's there in that type of way, like I want him to be. I just wish it was more, but I love him because um, me and him got a lot of a lot in common, and we just been through everything. And he's and he's like very supportive with me, and he's patient sometimes with me. <laughs> but I, I love it. Okay. He just got a little flaws as far as financial and talking to me. Okay. Whew. That was tough. <laughs> Mr. Moore, why don't you, uh, why don't you give me 90 seconds on why Ms. Bonner is the woman for you? The first day I met Tanisha, we fell in love over and over and over again. Um... I still got love for Tanisha, and I want to spend the rest of my life with her. I mean, she can sing, I can sing, she know how to dress, I know how to dress. <laughs> she get money, I get money. But sometimes it might not be enough mm -hmm. for her, you know? Um, Tanisha is very outspoken. I'm very outspoken, you know? Um, we've got a lot of differences, too, and a lot of those differences, you know, is the reason why I'm here today, you know? I feel like if she worked at a lot of stuff that she got going on and I work at a lot of stuff that I got going on, we could eventually make it work, you know what I'm saying? But it's just a lot of stuff that gotta change. 
You know what I'm saying? Mr. 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 Moore, I thought there was no way in the world you could have done a worse declaration of love than Ms. Bonner, <laughs> but you pulled it off. <laughs> <laughs> so I read your compatibility report, which was what which was just frightening. He wants to be head of that household. You say, no, nah, he can't be head of the household. No. You gotta be on the same page about that, or that'll never work at all. You Mr. Mr. Moore, when I asked you, list five things that are wrong with you, you know what you said? There's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> My indecisiveness. Yes, your indecisiveness, uh, which, you know, I could list five things wrong with you, and I just met you. So <laughs> I, 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 I'm a little concerned about your self-awareness. Uh, and uh, you over there... Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm glittering gold, and if he if he can't accept that, then mm, I don't know what saying? to tell him. You don't know what's wrong with yourself. <laughs> but, but to, to me, to me, it's nothing wrong with me. I'm I'm absolutely fine with myself. All righty then. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Lynn Dower's ruling next. Divorce court. Judge Lynn Dower's ruling right now. I talk too much. I worry too much. I, 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 I can't cook. I'm very quick to make decisions about things that I should take more time with. I, I, I don't drive well. I, you know, there's a whole lot wrong with me, and I know them. My husband married me and he accepts them, but, but if I know that I talk too much, if I know that I finish my husband's sentences for him because I don't think he speaks quickly enough, all of these things I know about myself, he's accepted them, but I don't just run over him with it. I work on it. We stay married because I am self-aware. I am aware of what's wrong with me, and I don't say I am perfect, just accept it. That's why he can't, he, why you're not getting along with him. If you were perfect, I mean, it, it's just crazy. Mr. Moore, you are not self-aware either. You're very immature, nice guy, you're very funny, cannot hold a conversation to save your life. The reason that you guys don't communicate, one reason is you don't ever answer a question. I ask you a question, you know, what time of day is it, and then you, you tell me the grass is green. It's just, there, it's woo, I got something I want to say. I, you can't have a conversation with somebody. You cannot communicate with people unless you listen to them and discuss what the topic is that they raise. I understand. And you don't do that. Do, you with me? You're right. I'm with you. you, 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 you I'm on the bandwagon. You on the bandwagon? Are you on the, my husband's, oh, I'll just say yes to her to keep her quiet bandwagon. <laughs> I, I know when that one's pulling out of the station. Um, Ms., Ms. Bonner, no one who thinks they're perfect should ever get married. It's a failure waiting to happen. Because if you think you're perfect, you won't adjust, you won't compromise, you won't communicate, you won't do anything because you think you're perfect and he needs to adjust to who you are. That is a selfish, self-centered, unworkable uh, marriage. And you should not, you should, not only should you not marry him, you should not get married till you get it together. If you can't list five things that are wrong with you, you need to go somewhere and have somebody list them for you. <laughs> Because you'll be, never be married. You two have absolutely no business whatsoever getting married. I'm not going to tear this up because I am going to burn it. I'm going to find me some matches and I'm going to watch it go up in flames. You're good people, but you're immature and you're all about yourselves. You don't know how to give at all. Both of you said in your papers that you, you said you were giving 100% and he was giving zero. You're saying you're giving 100% and she was giving zero. That means you're 100% confused about what's going on. You're 100% unaware of what is happening. You're 100% unaware of who you are and you're 100% failing to understand what it is to be in a relationship. You have absolutely no clue. You're talking past each other. It's crazy. You both need to go home, get yourself together, find out what's wrong with you. You go to school, get an education or something like that. But whatever you do, please don't get married. And if you do get married, don't come here for the divorce, because I don't want to see you. <laughs> this matter is adjourned. Tanisha and Isaiah agree with the judge that they don't listen to each other and have committed to improving their communication.
Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court.